Once a graffiti artist with no connection or fashion experience, Mark Echo left the safety net of pharmacy school to start his own company. Armed with hustle, sweat, equity, and creativity, he flipped a $5,000 bag of cash into a global corporation now worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Mark is an American fashion designer, entrepreneur, investor, and artist. He is the founder of Mark Echo Enterprises, a global fashion and lifestyle company. He is also the founder and chairman of Complex Media, the world's leading provider of fashion, entertainment, lifestyle, and product trends to young male tastemakers. But we will discuss a little bit more about that later. When we think about Mark Echo, we think about the apparel and the famous Rhino. It either operates under the name Echo Unlimited or under brands including Echo Red, which is the line for women. Although you probably won't see anyone wearing Echo today, in the 1990s and early 2000s, it definitely was one of the fastest growing brands along with Rockaware, Fat Farm, and a couple others. Echo was originally associated with hip hop and skating culture and moved into mainstream urban culture in the early 2000s. Mark Echo started out making t-shirts for himself because he was into graffiti. He later was known as the guy on campus that made t-shirts in his school and was sometimes making upwards of six to seven hundred dollars a week. Then later realizing there was money in this industry so he kept it going. Mark said that he usually gets the question of why Echo has the Rhino. The simple story is this. During the time of selling his t-shirts he made a couple with the Rhino logo on it and those seemed to sell out immediately. Since those t-shirts did so well, he thought to himself that it might be a good icon for the brand since most animals are already taken. Polo has the pony, Lacoste has the crocodile, but no one had the rhino. And the rest as we know it is history. But why Echo held an interesting spot in the timeline of streetwear is because Mark evidently laid the groundwork as marketing and business and streetwear as we know it. The reason why Echo's timing was so crucial to the success is because the early 2000s had a couple main outlets that grabbed the youth's attention. The combination of the first iPod from Apple dropping in 2001 had every kid listening to their own music and slowly turning away from the traditional sounds on the radio. Second is that the average household having television access to channels like MTV music videos. Rap music at this point was on fire at a national level and kids wanted every piece of the pie. Rappers like Jay-Z and 50 Cent topping the charts becoming rap icons but most importantly influencers of their time. The audience wanted to talk, walk, act, and even dress like the rappers did. And during this era, if rappers weren't promoting their own brands, we'd easily catch them wearing a brand like Echo as their weapon of choice. Some can say that Mark unknowingly started Echo at a perfect time when people really didn't know much about the definition of what streetwear was. But what they did know is that they wanted it. Mark understood the demand and had garments readily available in many retailers, but the most notable was Macy's. Of course, we all know what hype beasts think of Macy's, but keep in mind this is before anyone knew what a hype beast even was. Echo's garments were fairly priced since they weren't too expensive, but they also weren't too cheap. They consistently had enough graphic t-shirts, hoodies, and iconic Rhino logos, which was either screen printed, embossed, or even embroidered on the front area of the chest. It's safe to say if you grew up during the early or mid 2000s, you were guaranteed to see someone rocking a t-shirt or zip up hoodie with a Rhino on it. And if I can recall correctly, Echo held its status as a well-known and popular brand to rock all the way up until the mid 2000s. Of course, it had its loyal customers, much like any brand that grows to that caliber, but my speculation of the three noteworthy sequences that might have detrimented Echo from being considered a popular or hype brand moving forward was this. One was the accessibility. Basically, the brand ended up in a majority of high traffic retailers, which in turn had every kid wearing it. And as we know it, if every kid wears the same thing, it no longer feels as cool as it used to. The second would be that rappers stopped wearing it. Many of the rappers themselves started their own brands and were no longer promoting for others. And of course the kids followed along. And third, in the mid 2000s, you had many brands coming up during those times. Echo was no longer the only brand on the block. You had brands like The Hundreds, LRG, Obey, Bape, and Stussy, and many more which gave the youth more options to be a part of a community that felt closer to their particular interests. Now even though at this point most consumers were not wearing Echo with the same confidence they used to, the brand still remained consistent with the generalized demographic they were targeting. So if you're wondering, the answer is yes. Echo lost its spot for status in the early days of street fashion, but that's not to say you still can't go to Macy's website and a couple other select retailers to find their products in 2019. In fact, by 2009, Echo and 
Unlimited had over a billion dollars in global revenue. In that same year, on October 27, 2009, the Iconics brand group paid $109 million for a 51% stake in Echo Unlimited, and by May 2013, it acquired full ownership. With the funds that Mark sold the company with, he later started to put more focus into Complex Magazine, which started in 2002. I'd love to dive more into what Complex is, but maybe I can save that for another video. So leave a comment and let me know if you would like me to do so. But to move on, I believe Mark, much like other well-known streetwear designers like Nigo selling Bape, or for contemporary purposes, Virgil selling Off-White, had both fallen into the same footsteps of building a brand's equity and later selling it to move on. By concluding this video, the last thoughts I'd like to give about Echo is that the brand itself very well could have been a crash course example for other companies to repeat. Because in the heat of the moment when a brand is hot, it can feel as if it will never end. But the reality is, nothing lasts forever, including the hottest streetwear brand you hold so dearly. Although I might not know everything that happens behind closed doors, from the outside looking in perspective, Mark chose a perfect time to sell Echo and move on with Complex, and the rest as we know it is history. Now since much of Mark's business history in streetwear is still happening as we speak, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Did you know all about Echo and Complex? Did you used to wear Echo back in the day? Do you even know any stores in contemporary times that even sell Echo right now? But anyways, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys and girls keep it locked right here for all your latest information from music, fashion, to culture. It's your boy Keezy, and I'm out. Peace.